Dr. Fizz here, Theoretical Physics, our third integral trick. We're going to integrate this integral over all x, and this integral might lead you to entertain integration by parts, but we're going to do this integral by taking a derivative and not even doing an integral. Here's the general idea. We uh, look at an integral we already have seen before, e to the minus x squared dx, we showed to be the square root of pi. If we put an a in front, we get the square root of pi over a. It's instructive for you to check that from our previous assignment. Notice that a must be greater than zero so that we get no problems with this thing blowing up to infinity. So this is nice and finite with the a being positive because then the minus sign makes sure everything behaves nicely. And to do this top integral, we're going to take a derivative of the bottom integral with respect to a. You might say, wait a minute, a is a constant. You can't do that. Well, we're going to pretend that a is not a constant for the moment. Take the derivative, because if we do that, the derivative with respect to a pulls down a minus x squared, and the minus sign here makes it a plus x squared. You get this. Now, a has nothing to do with x, so it's not going to affect the integral. It's immune to x and the integration. And our intent at the end will be to put in a equal to 1, and the a will disappear. It's, it's like a trick. It's a trick to bring in a, take the derivative, set a equal to 1, and we're finished. So this here, integral, is solved for us up here. So we're going to take the derivative of the answer. Now the derivative here is derivative with respect to a of a to the minus one-half power. Brings down the minus one-half, kills this uh, minus sign, get plus one-half, and a to the minus one-half becomes a to the minus three-halves. And one way to write one over a to the three-halves is to write one over a times one over a to the one half. In other words, one over a times one over the square root of a does the trick. And I like to do that to keep this square root of pi over a uh, factor in there. Notice that at this point you can take the a to be one, and you should because there's no a over here. It's understood that you would do that. And when you take the a to be one, you have the answer to your integral. Marvelous. We take a derivative to do an integral. This is so powerful that we can do the general case where even powers of x multiply the e to the minus x squared, so n could be actually n could be 0. Uh, we know that integral, and it could be 1, 2, 3, 4. And we do this by taking derivatives of our answer for e to the minus ax squared, and by taking derivatives you'll get various powers of a, the general case, and some factorial, and you're basically going to the integral table where they have exponentials and definite integrals, and you're starting to derive all the integrals that are in the integral table using our tricks. Uh, notice that when you have an integration over uh, both uh, positive and negative values, uh, that are you know, symmetric um, range uh, here that you're, lo you're looking at, uh, that this even function, if it should multiply an odd function, so if you had odd powers here, you would have an overall odd function, and over this symmetric range, you would get zero. So for any odd power of x, we wouldn't have to worry about this integral. So by doing x to the 2n for the even powers, we are actually doing all the cases.